Hi, everybody. This is Lucinda from Listen, Love, Pray, and this is class number two of our four class session on this book, Switch on Your Brain by Dr. Caroline Leaf, how to capture your toxic thoughts and remove them and replace them, actually build new structures in your brain with positive, uplifting, godly thoughts. Class one, we discussed step one, which is gather. Becoming aware of the signals that come into our brains from our senses, our eyes, our nose, and also those memories that pop up into our mind. Because when thoughts come into our conscious mind, that is when they're labile. They have the ability to change. So let me share a PowerPoint. We'll jump right in. And again, so glad you're here. This is, as I said, class number two of Switch On Your Brain by Listen, Love, Pray. It's March 11th, 2024. If you're watching this at a later date, welcome. And remember to go back and look at the first class also on our YouTube channel. Five steps to switch on your brain, according to Dr. Caroline Leaf. Last week, we did step one, gather. This week, week two, we're doing steps two and three, focused reflection and writing. But let's review. Step one, gather, was becoming aware of all those signals. We took time and we settled ourselves and we thought of five things that we could see right at the moment. And then we did, closed our eyes and we did four things that we could hear and so on and so forth. That just made us aware of the signals. And then we thought about what else was coming up during that time? What memories came up? Were we thinking about dinner or work or a relationship that's on our hearts? The homework for week one was to take at least two days and write down any negative thoughts, to become aware of those negative thoughts. How many did you have per day it could have been just a few or could have been too numerous to count, but it's a way of becoming aware of the signals coming into our brains. Caroline Leaf says, step two starts the process of doing your own brain surgery. Doesn't that make you interested? How can we do our own brain surgery? Well, keep your listening ears on and learn. She says, whatever we think about the most will grow. Throughout life, our brains can reorganize and change its structure and function through mental experience alone. When we constantly focus on a problem, such as people who struggle with PTSD, it's post-traumatic stress disorder. It's this reliving of a traumatic event, both in our minds, and then it explodes out into our bodies. So when we constantly focus on that, our brains get worse. When we eliminate and replace a problem, a toxic thought, a traumatic memory, the brain gets better. And that's what we're gonna learn today. Everybody, why don't you say out loud with me this important tin scripture? Philippians 4 verse eight, here we go. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. That might be a scripture that you would like to memorize. After step one, the gathering stage, this is words from Dr. Caroline's Leaf, Leaf's book. I could never come up with all these technical words. She says on page 173, 
electromagnetic signal speed through the hippocampus moving toward the front of the brain. She says a lot more and let me just read you a little bit. You may have to go look up these terms like I did. The basal forebrain and the orbitofrontal cortex, which are behind the inside corners of your eyes and above your eyebrows. The information flows through in the hippocampus for 24 to 48 hours, constantly being amplified each time it cycles to the front. If you have the book, definitely read this chapter. It's chapter 12. So much good stuff. So I kind of tried to break it down to basic language. So you have a conscious thought. You become aware of the signal that has come into your brain. It's a thought you can identify. And when you have this conscious thought, it's labile. It's unstable and changeable. And change must occur. Believe it or not, change must occur. It doesn't stay the same ever. Either we reinforce it as it is, so it grows stronger, or we change some or all of it. And the deeper we think about this thought, the more change we can make. Check out this. Has anyone ever heard of gyrification? Well, I hadn't until I read this book. She says one additional benefit of deep thinking is increased gyrification. And this creates more folds in the cortex of the brain. If you've ever seen a picture of the brain, it always looks like there's there are folds in it. Well, that's because there actually are. These extra folds allow the brain to process information faster, make decisions quicker, and improve memory. In short, improvement of the physical structure of your brain will have dramatic improvement of attention, memory, and feeling awareness. So, Think back over the last year of your life and on a scale from one to 10, the 10 being the greatest, what is your ability to focus? One to 10. Some of us may be at a nine. Others of us may be right down there at a one or two. What is your ability to focus? And then look at that second question. Are you willing become a deep thinker. And I, I believe wherever we are on that scale of our ability to focus, there's always more. So let's all pray for Holy Spirit help and power. Lord Jesus, we step boldly to your throne of mercy and grace. And we ask Holy Spirit to help us, to help us focus to help us identify those toxic thoughts, to help us find scripture that will replace them. And we ask for that power that is within us, that Holy Spirit power that can do immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine. We pray for that to rise up within us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So here's some ways that we can start to be deep thinkers. You might have heard of Psalm 46, verse 10, where it says, be still and know that I am God. This is actually from chapter five in her book. Directed rest. So just being still. Perhaps just setting everything aside and thinking about God. Perhaps finding one scripture to meditate on. Being still. Here's another hint. We can modify our practices of thought. We can become disciplined, becoming aware of our thoughts and choosing what to focus upon. We can reflect, take time to ponder. We can pray, ask for help. We can memorize or quote scripture and that will improve our spiritual health and Increase that godly real estate in the mind. Remember on um, class one where I had the picture of the villages and all of that real estate? And of course the villages is ever increasing. 
building more and more. Well, that's what our brain does too. It always increases with our thoughts, building more of those dendrite structures in our brains. We want to increase the God we real estate in our minds. The non-conscious metacognitive mind is filled with thoughts we've been had, we've been building since, since we were in the womb. We weren't even out in the world, out of our mothers yet. And our minds were building these non-conscious thoughts. And those form the perceptual base from which we see life, all of our non-conscious thoughts. Up to 99% of the decisions we make are based on what we've built and automatized into our non-conscious metacognitive level. So put in simpler terms, our non-conscious mind has the roots of all of our words and actions. And we choose with our minds what these roots will be. Look at the trees on the right of this scene. Remember in chapter one, where Dr. Leaf explained to us that our thoughts are like structure. They are structures. They're being built in our brains, just like these trees, and just like all those little branches, we're constantly growing in our mind, and we can determine what our roots will be. On page 100, she says, our brains may have the stamps from the past, but they are being rewired by our expectation of the future. Faith motivates us to pursue God's goals. Hope leads to expectation, which creates peace, excitement, and help in our minds. Here's the third hint to how to move into directed focus. Stop milkshake multitasking. This is from chapter six. She describes something that she calls hurry sickness. Raise your hand if you have hurry sickness. If you're always hurrying, if your life is busy, busy, busy. So hurry sickness decreases our attention. It opens us up to shallow and weak decisions. And it brings us kind of into a passive mindlessness. And when we have all these multitasking things going on, it's hard to come into a directed focus where we deeply think about things. So step three is writing. And you say, Lucinda, what in the world is that? Well, that's something Caroline Leaf calls a metacog. Looks like a bunch of circles, doesn't it? But look, they're connected. So let's see what this is. She says the actual process of writing consolidates thoughts. Writing adds clarity to what you've been thinking about. Writing helps you see your conscious and non-conscious non thoughts in a visual way. And it highlights the area that needs to be detoxed. And she says, how? Like the way you write down your thoughts is very important because there are ways of writing down stuff that work more effectively with our brain processes. Who knew this stuff? So she says, be creative. Like don't always write in a straight line draw pictures or diagrams, maybe add a little color. Look at those arrows and squiggly lines that she put in there. So what are we gonna do with this information? I sent all of you an attachment with a Metacog, but if you didn't get a chance to print it out, just grab a piece of paper, write down a big circle in the middle, and then a little, like maybe four lines and other circles and then connect the outer circles to the more circles. And here's the task. Think about one toxic thought. So it, it may be something like anger or fear. It could be frustration. 
could be pain, worry. What's a toxic thought that you've had during the week? Remember, we were supposed to be gathering information and identifying our negative thoughts. Maybe it's a sense of hopelessness about something. So write down one thought in the center and then open to Holy Spirit, ask for his help and write down the thoughts that are related to the main thought. So let's say it's fear. So what are you afraid about? So in the next connected circles, you could say, I'm afraid of speaking in front of a large group. And then the next, if you go down, the next connected, the circle that's connected to the large circle, you could say, I'm afraid that people will think I'm dumb. And then so on and so forth. And then explore the nuances of that. So if you're afraid of speaking in front of large groups, you're like, I don't know what, I don't, I'm afraid of walking up in front of people. I'm afraid of people looking at me. You know, it's a nuance of that one thought and so on and so forth. So this metacog process encourages both sides of the brain to work together. The left side of our brain goes from detail to big picture. So that's all the little outer circles to the big picture, the inner main thought. While our right side goes from the big picture to detail. Here's an example. Yes, this looks very complicated, but stick with me. In 2021, Listen, Love, Pray read and gave a class on Dr. Caroline's book, Dr. Caroline Leaf's book, Think and Eat Smart. There was a ton of information in this book, and I thought that the class was really struggling. So I made a metaclock for the class. And in the middle, the thought was, it's, there's too much information. Too much, it's too hard, and it's too muddy. It was, it was hard to understand. So too much, too hard, too muddy, right in the center. And then the related thoughts to that, you see the other colored circles that attach to the main thought, was that I'm confused, frustrated. I feel guilty that I can't understand. I don't know what God's will is in this whole class. I have doubt that I can ever change. And I have no time for this. It's too much, too hard, too muddy. So then let's just look at the frustration. It's circled in red. So the main thought is too much, too hard, too muddy. The next thought, the, a connected thought is I'm frustrated. And then exploring, exploring the nuances of frustration is, first of all, there's not enough food options in the food store. So I'm frustrated. I can't put her wisdom into practice. Then there's too many eating decisions. It's just too hard. It makes me frustrated. I want to change, but I can't. Another related thought is I don't have the time or the motivation to read all of these labels. I'm frustrated because it's too much, too hard, too much. And then the last nuanced thought is if everyone is different, like if our whole body structures process food differently, what is right for me? I don't know. I'm frustrated. Do you understand in part? We truly have to do this ourselves. We kind of have to slog through our first couple of metacogs before we start to understand how this can help us deeply think about a toxic thought. We're going to spend some time in directed reflection and writing. I hope you have your metacog. If you don't, again, just take a piece of paper and make a bunch of circles like this one, and that will serve just fine. And in our meditation time, we're gonna ask Holy Spirit to direct us to one toxic thought and put that in the center. And then develop your metacog. Find those other nuances. It doesn't have to be perfect, just go for it. And then we'll rejoin and discuss. And after we've come back, our homework for the next two days is to write down two negative thoughts. First of all, become aware. Write down these negative thoughts. Develop a metacog around the thoughts. And then we'll 
explore that more in our third class on Monday, March 18th. Thank you so much for coming. My prayers are with you. This is not an easy process, but it's going to be worth it to take the time to deeply think about those negative thoughts. And then we'll move into more exciting and more powerful steps. God bless you.